What up, y'all? This is Frisco Trey, and I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. So we got my guy, Fresco Trey, jumping off the porch with us today, man. Welcome, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem, sure. man. Nah, I've been tapping to your music for, you know, the last few months, man. You're dope, That's love. Man. That's love, for sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I appreciate you coming by today, too, man. Yeah, I feel good to be here, man. I yes, sir, good. man. man. I, I, I watched a lot of these interviews, you know what I'm saying, before I... Oh, for real? I, before I even started making music, so. Oh, that's dope right there, Yeah, man. so it's feel good to be here for sure. Nah, that's what's up, bro. Yeah. So, man, go ahead, shout out your people sitting behind you today. Hey, man, you see, I got my boy Quiz with me, man. Stop playing. I got my boy Meek right here. And I got my boy Red in the beat with me, man. Okay. It was, it was just, chill, man. I ain't got a big circle, but, you know, the ones I got, know my boys, so. Yeah. As long as you got a few solid ones, that's all you really that's need. That's all you, you need, know what I'm you saying? Know? That's all you need. That's why I try to tell people, man, like, if you got too many people around you, it's hard to spot the snakes out. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you got you got a few close ones, then you can y'all can mold together and build together and stay away from being that. that you know what I'm saying? So nah, absolutely. That's how we rock for sure. Nah, I dig that, man. Yeah. So what do you got planned here in Atlanta, man? You in and out with it? You here for a while? You working? What you what you got planned? Uh, I'm here for a couple of days. I got a uh, I got a little DJ party I'm going to tonight. I got a listening party tomorrow. Hmm. Um, and then I'm probably just gonna be in the studio. You know, just connecting with some people. Uh, Making some music. I, I'll be here for a little bit. Okay. Yeah. That's what's good, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. So you from Memphis, right? Yeah. Memphis, Tennessee. Born and raised. Whitehaven. Whitehaven. Yeah. Whitehaven, baby. Everyone say Blackhaven when they come up here. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> you, figure, you say what you want, man. <laughs> All right, man. So I need to get, like, your perspective on what's life like at Whitehaven, then, man. What be going on up there? Man. And Whitehaven. It be a lot of crazy shit going on, but... I got to tell people, you stay out of the way, you good. That was me. I stayed out of the way. I played basketball. So, like, I was at the gym, you know what I'm saying? I was doing other stuff. I really wasn't just too, too, like, too heavy in what the, the shit that actually happens in, in the streets for real. So, yeah. but, um, like I said, being, being from White Haven, though, was cool because, like, like I said, we used to just walk to the Y and everybody, everybody who, who is something now or whatever, like, they used to, we just always be there playing basketball growing up. So, it was cool. It was a, it was a good like family community out there. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. really same shit. Uh, different city. I got you. Yeah. You know, Memphis got that reputation being a really tough city, man. A lot yeah. of violence. Yeah. So was it like a plan for you to be like, man, I need to stay out the way. I need to figure out something more positive to do. Or yeah, I mean, shout out to my parents. You know, like my dad. You know, he grew up in that. You know, what I'm saying he did 13 years in jail, all of that. So like. When I was born, he already had it planned out for me that he didn't want me to, you know what I'm saying, get caught into that. And I can salute him because he did a good job at that. So yeah. I stayed, you know what I'm saying? I was, like I said, I was playing basketball, I was out of the way. I was traveling every weekend out of town playing basketball. And um, yeah, but I, what I will say though, like being from Memphis, it did teach me a lot of like what to, watch, what to look out for, you know what I'm saying, how to survive for real. Um, they grind, you know what I'm saying? We, we always preach grit and grind, and that's the true mm -hmm. thing because, like, you got to. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing, you know what I'm saying? Especially, like, me. I got a different style of music. So, me starting, ain't nobody really just, you know what I'm saying? They weren't gravitating to my shit off rip, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, I had to really put it in their face and go out there and, and do the groundwork. And that, that, that part of Memphis taught me a lot. So, wherever I'm met in the world, I can, I can survive and move, move, move good because I know, you know what I'm saying, I, I'd have had that experience from where I'm from. Yeah. So, but yeah, man, and all in all, I would say I love the fact that I'm from Memphis and I probably wouldn't want to grow up nowhere else if I could do it again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, shout out to your pops, man, for, you know, realizing, man, I, I made some mistakes. Yeah. I need to make sure my son don't make these same mistakes too. Exactly, man. nah, he a OG for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I understand you pretty nice at basketball, man. Yeah, man. You know, hey, me and my boy, we uh, we we actually grew up playing together, man. Him, so yeah. Hey, he know we we really get busy. Like, it be a lot of talks about different rappers with this basketball shit. And I just be laughing because <laughs> when they come, look, when they come to that time where I get in that court, dump, they gonna be like, damn, he really huh. one of them for sure. Have you played against any uh, rappers then? Uh, I played against Sway, Sway Lee, and then uh, the other day, I ain't played against Chopper. We was on the same team. But we played together. But that's probably like the only two rappers I played against for real. So you saying you want all the smoke with everybody? Everybody, no cap. Huh. Sorry to cut you out with everybody. Nah, you good. Everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm. What I what I do is different, man. They 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 play basketball. I play basketball. 
And you had offers the for scholarships, right? Yeah. Yep. I had like five of them. D1. That should let you know. Right can, you, there. can you list any? Huh? Can you list some of the I, It was like Rice, okay. um, Temple, uh, Belmont. Shit. I forgot the other two. Okay. But Rice was the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go out there and visit the, the campus or anything? Yeah, that's how, that's how I got my offer. I went out there. They had like a, uh, a camp. Hmm. I went out there and I just, I was kicking ass. <laughs> and they offered me right there. So yeah. why didn't you take any of the offers? It was because like, by the time I became a senior in high school, I, I realized I ain't had a love for it because mm -hmm. I stopped. So 11th grade, I stopped like, I stopped wanting to go to uh, practice. I ain't like, I didn't enjoy practice. And then by 12th grade, I didn't even want to play in the games no more. Mm -hmm. That's why I knew like the love for it had just left. And I was like, if I go to college, I'm gonna have to have some type of love for it because that, that's a different type of required, like a different type of, uh, and that's, a, that's a whole different world, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, I ain't ready for, I, I ain't gonna wanna do that. So I, like, I ain't gonna waste my time. So I was just like, let me just do music. What was your parents' reaction? Like, God damn, we, we traveled with you. We yeah. sent you to all these schools and My shit. mama was cool. My dad was hot. He was hot because <laughs> he was the one that did all the time, spent most of the money. So he was hot. Like, for like the first two days, we didn't even talk. He was mad. And then the third day he came, he was like, all right, that ain't, that ain't. my job is to just get behind you and what you want to do, not tell you what to do. Yeah. So then that's when we started music. Yeah, yeah. shit worked out. So. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's been working. Yeah. So what got you into making music at first then? Uh, my sister, my sister kind of threw me in the fire with the music. She was doing it before me. I used to just go with her to the studio. And then one day I was helping her in the studio and she just like, she saw something. Next day she just threw me in the studio myself. Hmm. And I just made a song on spot. And it was, it was a newfound love from there. Was it like, you fall in love with it right away? Like, yeah. man, I, oh, okay, yeah, this, right this, this is it. Next day at school, I'm writing songs all day through classes. I ain't paying attention to none, just writing songs. Man. Yeah. That's how I knew right there. Okay. Your sister still making music today? Yeah. Okay. Ashley Al. Tap in, check in with that Ashley Al. Nah, that's so. dope right there. So what type of feedback did you get when you when you dropped your first song then? Um, it was it was good. It was like I really didn't have no no feedback, no bad feedback for real. It was like a lot of people from my school, you know what I'm saying? Like I think the song did like twenty thousand views. That's my it was like my first song. It did like twenty thousand views on SoundCloud. And I was like, man, that was a lot for me. That's a lot for anyone on their first song. You know what man. I'm saying? Like, I ain't had, I ain't had nothing like this. I was like, yeah, that's hard. So I, was, yep. I kept going from there. Okay. Yeah. So like, who'd you grow up listening to? Because anyone that listens to your music, you don't have that typical Memphis sound. Yeah. Uh, growing up, my my mom and them, they had me on heavy on like, um, it was like Kanye West, John Legend, um, stuff like that. Tupac was like heavy. Hmm. And, uh, that's the type of stuff I listened to, like on the roads and stuff. It was it was music like that, like Bill Withers. It was crazy, like crazy, like oh. Like. And then when I started doing music, I transferred and I just started listening to like Post Malone, like more melodic rappers, like Post Malone. I was listening to like Justin Bieber. Like, it was like, weird, crazy, and um, yeah, like I just I just I just fell in love with the melodic rap, like like Lucci. I like it just it took me. So then when I started making it, that's where I, I just kept going like that. Okay. Yeah. So did you start taking music serious? Like as soon as you quit basketball, it was like, all right, this is what I need to be doing all in, or was it kind of a in between period for you? Or? Nah, it was like it was like music was that because my mama wanted me to go to college, and she told me she was like, if you don't start making progress in music within a year, then you going to college. Hmm. So like it was right after I stopped, I had to just I was going I was just going full force at it because I, I didn't want to go to school, you know what I'm saying yeah. at the time. So what's your creative process? Do you write? Do you punch in? Do a little bit of both or what? Uh, I do both. Um, when I first started, it was a lot of freestyling. Then I, I, I gravitated to like punching in. And now where I'm at now, I've made so many songs. I'm at a point now where like it's quality of a quantity for me. Hmm. So I'm at the point now where like I really, I literally take two, three hours on one song. Oh. I have writers and we just try to make the best song because you know what I'm saying? That, that's the, that's the, that's the love I'm shooting for, man. I'm shooting for. Yeah, sure. Ain't right nothing there. wrong with that. Yeah. Um, so when do you feel like you make your best music then? It's like when you're going through some real life shit? Is it when you're in good mood, you pissed off or? Man, it's when I'm going through shit. It's like, especially when I'm going through like a breakup with a girl, they be the junk, cause it's just like with your girl when you when you with a, when you with a girl, it's like you trust them. you trust them with a lot, with a lot of you. 
and when they do something to you, it feel like it just feel like you've been betrayed by it, like one of the closest people to you. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't know. When I go through a breakup, they just bring the best out of me because I feel the most vulnerable. Like it's just like, damn, like all guards are broken. I ain't, need, like, it ain't no, I can't even put up fake. I can't even put up a fake no more because like I'm hurt to the core. So that's when I just go in and be like, go crazy. Hmm. Have you always been comfortable opening up like that in your music? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always been that way. Yeah. I don't talk to a lot of people about stuff, so when I talk to a mic, I feel like I'm just talking right back to myself. Yeah. So I'd be cool, and then when I put it out, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, away from, I'm away from it, so yeah. So it sounds like it's pretty therapeutic for you then. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. That, that didn't got me through some of my toughest times, just being able to talk to myself. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, like, some of my darkest times when I felt the most depressed or whatever, like, being able to just get that out to somebody who ain't gonna say shit back, just listen, that'd be the dopest feeling. Oh, you know absolutely, yeah. yeah. And what, how does it make you feel when, uh, you know, your listeners or fans hit you up, it's like, man, this shit really helped me get through some hard times then, too. It just made me feel like I found my purpose. You feel what I'm saying? For me to tell my 100% honesty and millions of people resonate with it, that's my purpose, bro. Yeah. I ain't gotta fake it, I don't have to fake it. I can just literally say what I'm feeling and people, people are gonna feel it. And that's the beauty of music, you know what I'm saying? And it ain't, and it ain't just artists like me. It's, if you a street guy, if you rapping your life, whatever you doing, if you staying true to yourself, somebody, it's too many people in this world for them not to relate. Somebody gonna mm-hmm. relate to you. You dig know what I'm saying? So. No, that's for real, sure. yeah. Uh, so let's break down some of these songs you've done. Oh right? uh, yeah, for sure. So let's go back to By My Side. By My Side. <laughs> yeah, so like, what was you going through that day when you recorded this one, bro? Damn, By My Side, what was that, like 20, 2019? 2019. 2019? Um, shit, what was I going through? Ah, uh, yeah, so uh, phone calls whenever we ride. Uh, yeah, so basically it was, I, I think I had just, it was me and a couple of friends who probably just got into it or something, <laughs> or like split up and I was just like, I don't know, I, like I said, I felt betrayed and I was just like, I don't know. I just felt like I needed to uh, prove a point to a lot of people because I'm a humble guy. Like, I'm super humble, you know what I'm saying? like. So sometimes people take take advantage of that. So I just feel like I need to prove a point on that song and just, you know, really tell whoever ain't by my side, fuck them, who is, then I got you, you know what I'm saying? And if you're not, I, I don't hate you, but if you don't play, don't play no game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you get done with the song, do you expect it to take off like it did or how are you feeling about it? Nah, I ain't, I ain't expect it. But, you know, I did post a snippet and it did good, but I still didn't expect it because I was at a time where, like, all my songs was just doing, like, the same amount of numbers. Hmm. So I'm like, damn, like, when this cycle going to, like, go up a little bit? Yeah. And then I dropped it, and then it just, people just gravitated to it. They gravitated to it, and it went up from there. And then I really knew it was real when my Post Malone told, he, he reached out and told me that was his favorite song by me. Yeah. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> that's and wild. I was like, yeah, that, that song, it got to be something. That'd be something. So did he just reach out on the IG? How did, how did that come about? He reached out, so he reached out. So a guy he went to school with, I met a year before that. And I showed him my music and he liked it. And it, was, it was cool. That's my boy Caleb. And then I went to a show, a post in Atlanta. And I ended up, I got to go backstage. Okay. And, um, he told he had he had he saw me came to me he was telling me like bro like I love that song by my side and I'm thinking he just talking you know what I'm saying just like, he sings the chorus foreign cars and ever we ride I'm like hell nah this is my favorite artist and I told you yeah. it's my favorite artist and I'm like hell nah ain't no way and then shit I had got invited to a couple more concerts and then they came to Memphis and performed and then he invited me to go on tour with him and I didn't it, it wasn't like a tour where I performed with him it was like a tour of like I want you to come see what I'm doing. I want you to learn because it's going to be you one day. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I appreciate it. And then every time we was in a green room, he played by my side. And I was like, bro, that's crazy. That's wild right there. I was, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, that's crazy, man. That's, what, that's, when I, that's when I felt like, okay, that song is a good song. Yeah. You know? So what was that experience like being able to hit all these different shows, though? And like you said, kind of learn the game firsthand like that. Yeah. It was motivation. Like, it, was like, it was so much motivation. Like, it's... I feel like it's a lot of different type of people in this world. It's the type of person who look at shit like that as motivation, and it's the type of person who look like that and like get jealous or something. I'm a motiv- I, I, that motivated the fuck out of me. Like I left that tour 
and this is when COVID had happened. Mm-hmm. And I didn't talk to Post for like three years. I didn't see her in them, but I sent, we, me and him saw each other again recently. And we just had a long talk and I told him, I opened up, I was like, bro, I was like, I ain't never get a chance to just tell you how much I appreciate what you did for me. Not because, you know what I'm saying, you took me out of the, out of the hood or you did, you did that. It's because, bro, you gave me some motivation. You feel what I'm saying? You gave me a, you gave me a, a, a visual, a visual platform to want to reach. You feel what I'm saying? Like before then, I, I didn't, I was doing music, but I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know when I was going, what I was going to do, how far I was going to go. But then I saw that. I was like, bro, this, this is what I could be doing. Like this, he was like, bro, he was selling out arenas, 20,000, 30,000 oh, yeah. people. I'm like, bro, this is what I could be. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? So it was motivation for me. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. yeah and during COVID, he dropped that Die Young. Yeah, yes. yeah, that Die Young. Yes. That went crazy too. That went crazy. Talk about the inspiration for that one for people that haven't heard it. Yeah, uh, this was around the time a lot of the Black Lives Matter stuff was going on, uh, all the incidents that was happening, and uh, I just feel like at the time I could try to try to be some some like a voice and uh, give a give a give a like a a representation of what's going on in, in the fear of, of of black men in our community, and it's like you know. We do what we do because we don't want to die young, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, keep a gun, do this, do this, because we don't want to, we don't want to go, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to leave before our parents, especially. So that, that's where I was trying to go with that song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like you said, it went crazy, man. The feedback yeah. on that one was wild, man. Yeah. Then you follow up with, I feel good. Feel good. And this shit's out of here. Yeah. <laughs> that's the junk, that's the junk that, 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 got, that got me, that got me up there. Feel good, it was crazy because I, I wasn't making a lot of, happy songs or feel good songs. I was making a lot of sad songs. So I was like, bro, let me just go in here and have a good time. And then somebody sent me a, a guitar loop that was like the, the guitar loop. And I was like, the song had no beat at first. Um, but then it was I, just a loop at th- first? It was just the whole loop. I made a oh, whole wow. song just to the loop. And everybody loved it. I posted it on Instagram. It went crazy. And then my team was like, bro, you got to add a beat. Like, you got to be able to hit. So, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, no, I don't want, no, I'm not doing it. They was like, nah, bro, just trust us. So I did it. Went crazy. Yeah. Went crazy. Yeah. Went to LA, shot the video, and as soon as I dropped that song, literally, week two, two, three weeks later, every label was calling my phone. <laughs> no, facts. Was that overwhelming at the time? Yeah. Yeah. It was because I was still I was at home, couldn't cutting my grass, and like I'm, like every day, like I would cut grass, go fix stuff at the daycare or something. So I'm like I'm at the, I'm at the point like damn. All these labels calling my phone. I'm low key just ready to go with the first one, cause like I'm ready to leave from doing this. But my dad yeah. like, nah, hell nah, like, hell nah, like, wait, wait, wait. I'm like, nah, I'm tired of cutting grass. I want to move. <laughs> like, nah, wait. And, and, but thankful we waited, cause you know, so we got the right situation. Man. Yeah. I, so it, it was like an overwhelming experience because I was just ready to leave it, but also I couldn't rush too much, cause I needed to, you know, what I'm saying, stay focused. So. Yeah. yeah. What made Warner's the right situation for you then? I just felt like when I met with them, you know, everybody felt like it felt, I don't know, it, it felt like it would, it would be a home. It could be a home, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to go into it looking for a house. I wanted to, you know what I'm saying, somebody, because I know my music is the type of music that might just pop overnight. Hmm. My music is something that's going to gradually come with fans who, you know what I'm saying, grow with me. And so that's why I wanted to be at, be at a home. And I felt like Warner was that, you know what I'm saying? I met with a lot of people from the staff and a lot of times I know who, really fuck with me because of what songs they tell me they like. When a label come to me, they just say, oh, feel good, I love that song, da, da, da. I'm like, okay, all right. That's what... But when a label come to me, I'm like, bro, like, I like feel good, but I like the, I like what you do with this type of music right here. Like, this music right here can have you, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, okay. They did their research, like, they really go, they went to go, like, actually learn, you know what I'm saying, about me and shit, so. That's why I feel like Warner, for sure. Yeah. What do you feel like are some of the main differences between being on a label and doing everything yourself like you were? Some of the differences, um, I feel like you gotta, you just gotta, you just got a power. You just got like a powerhouse behind you. You know what I'm saying? Like when you drop, it's just like they, they and then they can lead you. Like for people like me, the direction was good too. Like I have, I have a team as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like and my team go, go hard for me. And so getting that direction from somebody who like, who've been doing this for a long time, is also good, you know. Yeah, I yeah. feel that. You ended up moving out to LA afterwards? Yeah, well, I'm, I moved to Orange County. Okay. It's like an hour from LA. Gotcha. Yeah. So what do you think of uh, living out there in Cali then, man? 
uh, it's cool. The weather is great, obviously, <laughs> but you know, it's just like a lot. I don't know. I just don't really just. Uh, I don't thrive well with pe- like with the type of like with the type of environment that is in California. You know, so I'm about to move back to the south. I, um, I want to move to Texas. Okay. I want to move to Texas, so hopefully I can do that within this year. And, uh, yeah, Cali's cool though. Yeah. It's great for opportunities. A lot of opportunities out there, for sure. Yeah. Nothing like that southern hospitality. Exactly. There's nothing like it, bro. Every time I come home, I'm just like, thank you. I be out there. <laughs> Fuck. Real shit, man. Yeah. Um, then little TJ jumps on feel good, man. Yeah. W- what you think of that? Was that something the label had presented to you, or did they ask you who you wanted on there? Or uh, how'd that come back? They presented it to me, but I wasn't against it. Like I, I've been I've been bumping with TJ before I started music. Yeah. You know so. Yeah, I, I was like, I fuck with it. Let's do it, you know. Yeah. Shit went up too when you guys Yeah, it too. it's still going up too. Shout out to little TJ, man. Yeah. He going crazy as well. But yeah, song's still going up. Yeah. yeah. What about this DraftKings? DraftKings. DraftKings, uh, that song that came about with um, my boy Gary V. Uh, he hit me up one day. I was, I think, shooting a video. And he was like, bro, I got this, I got this opportunity. I need you to make a song for DraftKings. And shit, same day, hmm. when it took care of it, you know, and it went up, it went yeah. up. What's Gary V like, man? Shit. He like an encyclopedia right on your on your side. <laughs> Whatever you, it's like he got the answers to everything, hmm. you know what I'm saying? And he ain't he ain't shy about giving it out to you. So, and he's, he's just, a, he a fun person, man. He's just like, like to have fun and make money. Yeah. That's what it's about, so. Nah, I love Gary V. Yeah. He did a lot for me. Yeah, you got all the plugs, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, Heartbreak Diaries cool. 1 and 2, man. Like, talk about the creative process coming into making each of these. I ain't gonna lie. A heartbreak came before each one of them. Hmm. Oh, so it wasn't forced. This is some real life forced. shit here. It wasn't forced. A heartbreak came between each each one of them. The third one on the way. Okay. Throwing right. on the Who way. the hell keeps breaking your heart, man? Mine, mine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it the it, same girl? You keep going back? What, what's going on here? The, hey, the first first two was the same girl. <laughs> the first two were the same. The third joint, it was a different joint at the time. It wasn't even, it, uh, I, think, I think the third one, I let it happen because I knew it was going to make this type of music come out. <laughs> nah, for real. Like, nah, for real. I, I let it happen because I knew it was going to, it was going to, it was going to trigger something, so. Nah, but yeah, Heartbreak Diaries is it's special to me because, like I said, these are the ones that make me that, that show me it's my purpose because this is what I like to make. I like to make the real, like real music like this, and people love it. Like people, you know, what I'm saying I have a, a lot of people who really, you know, what I'm saying tell me like I'm saving them, I'm helping them out of stuff, and like so these are important for me. That's why this last one I keep I keep pushing back because it got to be special. Hmm. People look for these from like they in my DM Heartbreak Diaries three, Heartbreak Diaries three. So like. I gotta make sure this is the best one. Yeah. Nah, let them know it's worth the wait, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nah, for real. All right, so let's talk about Needs You, man. This, this one, crazy on TikTok, yeah. viral all over, man. Yeah. So, and I understand you didn't even like the song or you wasn't even gonna put this shit out. Huh? Yeah. It wasn't that I didn't like it. It just, it just was one of those ones that, like, I didn't think was the best. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like it. Like, I, me and my boy Red, we, was, we used to ride bumping that joint all day. But it just it just wasn't one of the ones that we thought was gonna be like it, and um, I posted a, a snippet of that song on TikTok mm-hmm. just to put up content for another song we was finna promote. <laughs> so like you know like we was finna promote another song, but we wanted to just put something up in the meantime to get like just to get people engaged, and then we was gonna post this, mm-hmm. and we just forgot about. I don't even remember what song it was. We forgot about it. It just it just went so crazy. Like I, I just remember posting the video. Putting my phone down, going to the club. I looked, I got to the club, was there like an hour. Looked at my phone, it was like 300,000 views. God damn. By the time I left the club, it was like an hour and 30 minutes later. I got home, it was at 2 million views. Did you think it was real? Like, I was fucking like, with me or? I, mean, I had went up like 400,000 followers on Instagram, I mean on, uh, on uh, TikTok. I was like, hell nah. And then shit. The next day we were scrambling, trying to get everything done. Video, like <laughs> song, master, all that. So, so no. how long does it take for you to actually drop the the music video? Though? Uh, the music video came like like 
like a month. But the song came out within like a week after that. Okay, yeah, yeah. you gotta take advantage of yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, it came like a week after that. Yeah. That shit was going crazy. Do you ever think about doing a remix to it? <laughs> yeah, I have. I have thought about it, but then I also was just like, all right, I might want to just keep going, move on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then I'm like, a lot of people haven't heard that song yet, so hmm. I could reintroduce it with a remix. Okay. Uh, one thing I really fuck with is uh, you're really creative with your music videos. Mm. Are you hands-on with these, or are these just ideas the directors bring it to you, or what's the creative process like? In uh, this? Some of them, not all of them. Uh, some of them I am, a lot of them are my dad. And then oh, really? I think like the last couple has been like uh, different directors just pitching ideas. Okay, like, yeah. So what's your thoughts on the music scene in Memphis, man? So many artists blowing up out the city right now. Yeah, wow, the city going crazy, it's on fire. You know what I'm saying? And I love that, you know what I'm saying? Because I think it's long overdue, Yeah. you know? So wow, the city going crazy right now, yeah. sure. Do you feel like you get more support in Memphis or elsewhere? Because like we said, you're not really making that typical Memphis sound. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere, but I mean, I feel like that's normal, you know. I don't. I still love Memphis, you know. What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I still go back, do my shows, help out, uh, do toy drives, all of that. But elsewhere for sure. Okay. Yeah. So you got your own label, Fresco the label. Yeah. Man. Break this down, man. Like, what are you trying to accomplish with the label? Uh, what am I trying to? I'm just, you know, it's all, I, I always was raised to be, you know, be your own boss. You know what I'm saying? Be a, be a boss. Uh, and I just want to, I, I know it's a lot of people who, just from my city, who, who like me, you know what I'm saying, who like make a different type of music and don't get the love they probably deserve or, you know what I'm saying. And I just, I just want to help. I just want to put that, put you in a position, you know what I'm saying, get a chance to tell, you, tell your story. Because your story is probably different from mine, different yeah. from that person. But I just want to give you a chance to tell that story, you know what I'm saying, like somebody gave me, so. That's, my, that, that's my, yeah. my goal. What do you feel like has been one of the biggest sacrifices you made in your life for you to be successful so far? For me to be successful? Uh, stop, I stopped partying. Um, I stopped chasing women. And I became disciplined in my grind. It was, just, it was like the biggest sacrifices for me. You know what I'm saying? I was missing the club. I was missing parties. I was working. You know what I'm saying? When, that, when you when you ain't partying, you hung over the next morning from party. I'm working still. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I stopped worried about you know what I'm saying what 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 girls I'm gonna see today. You know what I'm saying? What girls I'm gonna get inside? You know what I'm saying? I stopped worrying about that. I was I'm finna work. You know what I'm saying? If a girl pulls to the studio, you are gonna sit in here while I'm working. When I'm done working, we can do whatever. But if I'm in here eight hours, twelve hours, either you sit or you leave. I ain't tripping. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when I got that mindset, that's when everything just started clicking for me. You know what I'm saying? So. To anybody out there who's trying to make some shit work in life, if it's music, whatever, you gotta you gotta you gotta limit some of them things, man. So, sure. now that's real, man. It takes a lot of sacrifice, man. You gotta put away a lot of things that you love to kind of just focus in on this. Nah. Man. Yeah. Okay. What do you feel like has been one of the biggest risks you took in your career that paid off for you? The biggest risk. Uh, one of the biggest risks I t I took. Uh, Mm, that's a good question. Shit, it's been a lot, man. With the biggest one, mm, I would have to say, that's a great question. It's a great question, my boy. What was your name again? Hayes. Hayes. Yeah, it's a great question, Hayes. Thanks. I think it would probably be just really just deciding to, like to to move. To like, like, to like, get out, like, get out and just find myself. That was, I feel like that was because that was that was the thing that feared me the most was like moving away from just home, family, friends, mom, dad. Like, that I feared that the most. You know what I'm saying? But then when I did, and I just said, "Fuck it, I'm, a, I'm a figure out everything." You know what I'm saying? That's when I feel like I just started being able to find myself and wake up every morning with an agenda. You know what I'm saying? And just I feel like that's probably the biggest, the biggest one. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta take that big leap of faith, yeah. man. Now, Cap, I be like, I think um, The Rock said something that stuck with me. He was like, a lot of people, damn. He was like, a lot of people stand on the edge and they don't jump because 
they fear what's down there. But sometimes it could be a, I think he said something like a mattress or something that help you, but it's a lot of, some, it was a lot of opportunities. That, it was something like that, but basically it just taught me like, we fear a lot of, like we fear taking that next step because we don't know what the outcome will be. We don't know what to expect. But sometimes you just gotta do it, bro. And you just gotta do it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, you just gotta do it, man. And run with whatever come and stick and move how you gotta how you how you gotta do it. Yeah. yeah. Now they say you gotta get out your comfort zone to be successful. Exactly. They exactly. hit that next level. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That That's the only way you get better in anything. It's yeah, outside of that comfort zone. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Alright, so we got the new single out right now. Pull up. Yeah. Pull yeah up. Break this one down for us. Yeah. Uh that's featuring my girl Brise. Uh Pull Up was one of them songs. I had I came back to Memphis from Cali, and I just wanted to have a uh, a big studio session with a lot of uh, creators from Memphis. So producers, songwriters, artists, photographers. I just had, I got a big studio. I just told everybody to come. We had like three different rooms going. People just making music, and I put up in the studio, and I was playing this beat, and the beat was going crazy. I was like, shit, and I just started freestyling, and I just freestyled the song like pull up and that ah ah ah. And the whole, and the whole, like the room just was like going crazy. I was like, I just laid it down. When I laid it down, I went into another studio to record something. I came back in, and Bree, she put a verse. And it was crazy. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna put a verse on it. Cause I wasn't gonna put a verse at first. I was like, no, I'm gonna put a verse. And then posted it. And it just looks like fans really fucking with it too. Yeah, huh? you know. Yeah. So Heartbreak Diaries three. This is gonna be the next project or? Okay. Yeah. They're going to be the next one. Okay. So what should fans expect, man? Just more of the same heartbreak or you elevating the sound? You kind of working with different producers on here? What should we expect? Um, just the last one. It's going to be the last Heartbreak Diaries. So it's going to be super raw, super real. Um, I've been working uh, heavy with... My producers uh, out of Dallas, my boy Red, Einer, uh, a couple other producers I want to say right now. But I've just been working heavy with them, you know what I'm saying, just micromanaging everything, just make, trying to get the, the best sound because, like I said, I'm elevating my sound. Like I told you, I'm, I'm shooting for that, for, that, for, that, for that ceiling that has no ceiling. So, I don't know. It's just... I just want my fans to just know that, you know what I'm saying, I'm bringing out the best every time I come, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I ain't shorthanding no, like, y'all, I'm full at it, 100%. Yeah. You plan to put any features on there, or you riding solo again on this one? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We're going to see. We thinking wintertime, springtime, summertime, <laughs> you know, I'm going to put you... Get something out of uh, here. <laughs> hey, man, I was going to say is it's going to come within the next couple months. Okay. Next couple months. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be special. So. Say no more. Yeah. So it's brand new year, 2023. What's some goals you got set for this year? Um, I want to do more shows this year. I want to do more shows. I have a crazy live show, so I, 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 I want to perform more. Uh, I want to uh, obviously drop more music than I, this year than I did last year. I, I want to get into like some side shit too. So I want to get into like a little acting this year, hmm. um, and then just I'm just other shit, with, other like personal shit with like business. But yeah, okay. That's it. What's some advice you would share to the youth coming up right now? To the youth, I mean, the advice I give everybody is just to, like I say, stay stay true to yourself like that's the one thing that can you know just help you find your way in, in life coming up is just staying true to yourself and um i don't know keeping good company keeping good company around you good energy and yeah that's that's an advice i can could give that's some advice i would have wanted as a younger no that's solid right there yeah. all right you got a shout out you like to give before we wrap it up yeah i want to shout out my boys behind me I want to shout out my fam. I want to shout out Lou Shiesty, my boy Lucas. Uh, shout out my dad, coach, my mama. Shout out my whole team, FTL, everybody back home, Maya, Gino. Um, shout out Warner. Yeah, man. 
I don't know, man. I like to end everything what I do because I truly believe this. All my shows, everything. I like to say, if we show more love than we do hate, the world going to be great. So just take that with you however you want to take it. Pull up in that Tesla with Becca. This shit didn't take no effort. She don't like me, whatever. But she look at me like that.